What's going on guys? Right now we're going to be having a Sun and Libra, but on the flip side in a couple days, Thursday specifically, October 1st, we'll be having a full moon in Aries. So watch out because you might be doing a complete 180 degree opposition, which might put you in some form of red dead redemption. Alright guys, so now to actually get into it, this is going to be coming out a couple days before the actual full moon, so let, let's get into a couple of the moon signs that will be leading up into this actual placement, right? So, you know, it's raining outside, it's calm, you know, I remember back in, um, back in about 7th grade, 7th grade English, my old, uh, my old Jamaican English teacher who said, <laughs> who would always talk about freaking um, freaking dogs just being like, you know, dog, freaking Jamaican dogs can always eat chocolate would always tell me that whenever you hear the rain outside, that's just washing away all the experience, all the anguish, all the, you know, however you actually felt about the experience before, and it just washes it away and cleanses it for a new day, a new experience, for, so you can be clear, aware, and just alert with whatever you want going on. So you can sort of look at watching this video and actually gaining some information and understanding of the stars, much like that. You're soaking yourself in the waters. You're allowing yourself to be cleansed of what you felt, thought, and experienced before, and now you're open to something new, right? Because you created the space for it. Don't get all Plutonian on me here. This ain't no hail or ice blocks, but this is just calm. Venus just washing over you, you know? Imagine that Pisces exaltation just washing over you. But without further ado, before we get to Pisces, let's talk about the moon in Aquarius, right? So right now we have the moon in Aquarius, and the moon in Aquarius is reflecting the light off of the sun in Libra. Right now, Libra isn't exactly angling any fixed stars in the constellation specifically, but shortly after the full moon it will. But we're not there yet, so let's talk about this. So Aquarius is fixed air, being fixed on your own way of thinking and practicality. Now fixed air makes you a very uh, radical and well thought out individual that knows how they think and knows what they know before they actually can um, get out and just do something, you know? So this is like, they're already set, they're already fixed in their mind state before they get out and do anything. And they like to feel like this, so they don't really like to hop into too much new stuff unless they know how they engage with new experience and they know how they learn. Now, with this being the actual constellation that is angling the moon and reflecting what the sun has, the sun is in Libra. And like I said, it's not angling any fixed stars, so nothing too crazy is happening except just the Libra constellation itself which is the relationship house. So if you put these together, cardinal air with fixed air, this is a trine. So right now we have an opportunity to refine our ability to be relatable through our personality. So it's making ourselves, our individual knowledge base, our individual thought patterns more relatable. So you may think something and you may, if you normally attack someone aggressively, that won't work right now, and you probably know it won't work right now, so you're just sitting back, absorbing, reflecting, being like, you know what, maybe if I worded it this way and I was actually kind, my point would get across much better. And if you actually do this and it works out, you may actually uh, get into a new space and just be like, oh, okay, this is cool. I can explain this. This works a lot better, and I can actually get my point across in an agreeable fashion, you know? But sometimes that'll change when it, whenever the planets change and if you're unaware of yourself and you don't actually make that point. You don't develop that chakra wheel. You don't develop that star constellation body within yourself to actually do that on a consistent basis. But if you are aware, you can make that happen and make that change regardless of the alignments going on. Now, that is sort of closing off and ending at about, I want to say, I want to say, don't quote me on this, but Monday around Eastern Standard Time, maybe, maybe even Monday morning or Sunday. But it's ending soon. Or probably right around the time this video is about to come out. So this is this is don't don't get don't get all mad and be like, oh okay, why are you telling me about something that already happened? This is to build your understanding up to the full moon, okay? When we talk about the Pisces full moon and it's actually getting into the Pisces constellation and the moon's angling that, think about it. We just refined ourselves. We refined our own fixated version of thought. We got like our thoughts from the astral realm, we got them all bopping around being like, Oh, okay, I could do this, I could do this, I could relate with this way. You know, we have that trine going on, right? Now, we don't exactly have a trine with the next placement, but they do share a planet together. Pisces is exalted in Venus, and Libra is ruled in Venus. So when putting these together, we have a opportunity to actually relate our dreams, because where Libra feels at home is the exalted place of Pisces. So no matter which way it goes, the, planet, the, um, the actual constellations will be happy, regardless how it plays out. 
So this will be a perfect opportunity to relate your dreams, relate your experience, and actually come up with a dream or some type of situation that you really enjoy that you can share with others so that once the actual Aries full moon rolls around, you will be in an experience that it's like, oh, okay, at least we have this joint endeavor going. So when I start getting into my little transformative face and I don't like it so much, I can actually just chill, let go, sit, and be like, oh, okay, we had this good time. I don't need to get angry at this person right away. Because you may not do it during the full moon, but as we get into the days after it where it still carries the same full moon energy, watch out because something will get, uh, <laughs> things will get a little hectic and we're going to get into that. Don't worry about that. So while this full moon experience may be bright, it may be explosive, it may come off as very aggressive to some people, look at it like this. We've had a good amount of Libra time, but even Libras need to break out of their shell of just needing to just be in a relationship and create structure around their relationships, right? Sometimes they just have to break out of that and just go be, do something on their own. So with this full moon here, this is basically what's going to be happening and the vibe that's kind of be go going to be going on, you know? Like it's going to start off one way where it's like, oh, okay, I'm over here, I'm being relatable, but fuck it, I don't feel that anymore. I want to do my own thing. Bye. You know, that's going to be the whole vibe of this full moon. And people may think it will boil over into like, you know, broken business ventures, um, misunderstandings of what's going on, you know, worrying, depression, not quite uh, understanding how people feel about them, not knowing how people, not knowing how you even feel about people at some times, putting everybody in a sort of uncomfortable place. But as long as it doesn't go too far, this will be something needed. You know, you don't need to be relatable all the time. Yes, the sun and everybody feels like that's how we should be acting right now. But, you know, the moon's going to add a fresh slap of fuck no into that. You know what I'm saying? So, to get a little more specific into it, let's understand Aries and let's understand Libra. So, Libra is cardinal air. Aries is cardinal fire. So, we have initiating, creating new ways of thinking and communication. We have initiating, creating new ways of seeing and how to feel things, you know? So, they do share a cardinal aspect, but how they go about it is two very different ways. One wants you to just like keep coming up with means of conversation, keep coming up with means of just being relatable, right? And one one keeps coming up with a new way of seeing things. So they could look at you one way and feel like you're coming at them in one way, and then they could just totally switch up and create a new way of how to look at it and just come yeah, and just do something in a completely different way. So how you can sort of imagine this is, imagine you're at a party, right? You're just sitting by the bathroom and some drunk motherfucker's just coming up and talking to you, trying to be relatable, just trying to make conversation at us and, you know, small talk at a party. You know, they may, you may view them as like, oh, they're just being conversational at first. But when the full moon sort of kicks in, you're like, the fuck is this motherfucker being all like, oh, hey, how's it going? Just saying hi to me, trying to be all nice to that. Full well, you knew you were in the mindset of being like, oh, this person's cool. I like this person. They're very relatable. And then you just switch over because they said some dumb shit and you saw them stutter in their speech a little bit. And you're just like, aha, I caught you. Fuck you. I'm out of here. I'm taking a shit and I'm leaving. You know, just doing something like that. Like, that's pretty much how the how the Libra Aries moon. It'll just be like, it'll be, it's, it's an opposition. I don't want to call it a misunderstanding exactly because it's not. It'll just be directly like, they're just directly opposing each other, you know. They were cool, they were on your side before, but with an opposition, you can only do one or the other. One or the other. You can only do one or the other. It's a 180 degree angle for a reason. So it operates like a teeter-totter. You'll be on the sun side at one point, and then you'll be on the moon side at another point. Once it gets nighttime, you'll likely be on the full moon side, where everybody's just doing their own thing, following their own vibe. But while that's cool and you may go, you may come up with some crazy ideas, some crazy visions, some crazy uh, first house things, you may be enlightened, you may come up with a new idea for your business, you may come up with a new way to look at your relationship, and you know, <laughs> if you are an Aries moon yourself, you're going to have a lot of power and you'll just be directly opposing the Libra side of things altogether. But this, is, this, is, this isn't exactly the point, because the next following day after the fact, you got to pay attention to the fixed stars that the Libra constellation will be angling. And this is the star of Vindimatrix and Parima. It'll be mostly Vindimatrix at first because that's more like, that's, um, it's, it's like early 10 degrees Libra. So it'll be the later side of the second. But 
or maybe even uh, it'll be maybe it'll probably be more direct on the third actually but the second to the third depending on where you're at if you're on the east coast it'll be the later part of the second early morning of the third and if you're on like you know some other coast that's closer to the sun or whatever I, i'm not exactly sure what i'm even trying to say right now regarding that but um you, you get what i mean you can look that up, shit up for yourself depending on where you're at just go on astro Trucks to figure out what degree and then go on the fixstar.com thing and just be like, oh, okay, these are actual fixed stars that, that are angling us right now. And you can look this shit up and figure it out and do it for yourself. And if you are spiritual and you are where you can hop into your life body and just travel to that space and get the actual experience on your own terms. Without further ado, let's talk about the actual fixed stars themselves. So a couple days after this full moon, when you go through this sort of opposition phase, you're going to be angling Vinda Matrix directly on either the second or the third, right? So what this star actually represents is it's actually a part of the Virgo constellation. So you already know how Virgo gets down, worrying, overanalyzing, freaking out. All this influences will be coming through Vinda Matrix because you can look at Vinda Matrix and Parima as those two girls in class that are the type to just be like, excuse me, ma'am, uh, we forgot about the pop quiz. And everybody's just like, oh, God, why are you doing this? And they're just sitting there like, oh, I studied for this. I don't know how, how, how t what's going to happen if I don't take it. If I don't take it, it's tomorrow. Will I forget the information that I studied because I crammed all last night? Oh, my God. You know, that's how Vinda Matrix op operates. It's worrying, depression, freaking out, overanalyzing. All the negative aspects and the negative feelings that pushes a Virgo to be such a perfectionist, right? This is how Vinda Matrix gets, gets down. This is what backs and supports the actual just vibration of that. And Prima doesn't really help too much either. And it's shortly after in degrees. I think it's, um, don't quote me on this correctly, but I want to say it's like somewhere between 12 and 20 minutes of the degree, so the little increment behind the degree. So it's not too far after. Parima is probably like, if you can, if, hmm, Parima is probably like, it's like Vinda Matrix is little lackey. It's the one that sort of sits behind and actually, you know, follows through on some type of action. It's like the Mars for Vinda Matrix in some sense. So it's the one that doesn't, it doesn't exactly carry out the duties and obligations of Vinda Matrix. It just hops in and sort of tracks off the vibration that Vinda Matrix is carrying and creates it in a different shape and form. So it's like if you were worrying and you were freaking out and you know you were trying to be relatable and the Aries moon and the full moon energy is still getting at you because you you know you got so many freaking spirits in you. This is Parima just being all like oh well let me just let me just you know dunk that alley oop for you and just be like you know what this turned into you actually fucking something up. But to touch back on the example of the whole school and the, hey, sorry, pop quiz, and Parima's kind of like Vinda Matrix's little lackey that'll sort of sit behind, you know, they're friends, but she doesn't really speak too much, say too much. She's more or less the one that's just like tracking around and just sort of feeding, not, I don't want to say feeding off of, but feeding into and just sort of being like something that Vinda Matrix can reflect off of and actually get a little more worried, get a little more depressed, get a little more freaked out and rattled because, you know, Parima's maybe a friend. She's right there with Vinda Matrix hanging out. But she is still the type to, after she reminds Vinda Matrix that there may be a pop quiz and be like, hey, isn't there that pop quiz? And Vinda Matrix is the one to be like, oh, you know, hey, teacher. She's the one that'll be like, hey, do you have a pencil too? And Vinda Matrix probably only has one pencil, so it just adds more stress, and then she gets stressed, and it's just like back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, and it's just like, I don't really want any of that mess, you know? This is, this is the, they're the actual ones that carries the vibrations that lead to the sort of negative side to Virgo if they are acting through that actual constellation. And this is, right now, this is angling, you know, 9 to 10, not, I've been between 9 and 11 degrees Libra. So basically the second to the third, as I mentioned. This isn't even the this isn't even the worst of it, really. The worst of it is when we get into the 13, 14 degrees Libra a couple of days later, where the actual worrying can manifest itself in case it actually angles this other star. I actually forget the name, but it's something weird that I can't exactly pronounce. But that's where the actual bullshit and the actual downside and the actual accident can happen from all this worry energy. So watch out and don't actually play into this. A way you can actually flip this to your benefit, because, you know, we've been talking about the shitty side so damn much. The way you can flip this to your benefit is if you be in a space where you actually help the people that are getting caught up under these influence. If you need to pivot and you think you're going to be worrying about your business, pivot your business to being some way you can alleviate those that actually are worrying that don't know about these influences. Pivot in some type of way where you can actually be like, 
oh, okay, I mean, you know what, I'm going to actually help this person. I'm going to show this person. I know they're going through this energy. I'm going to have what they need when they need it. I'm going to be relatable, even if they look at me through this opposition. But hopefully by then, when it actually angles those stars, we'll have the moon in Taurus, so there'll be some type of stability. But watch out, because that can be that can lead to a sense of certainty in the worrying that people will be having. Because even though we are we are technically angling the Libra space in the sky, the Virgo constellation has actually moved into the Libra space in the sky where it's actually backing and supporting in some sense. So, in long story short, that's why if you actually see the the Virgo constellation in these stars, and these are actual stars that build up the Virgo constellation, then you'll be like, oh, okay, that's why that is. Anyways, thanks for following the daily alignments. That's it for me. Check back next time. Peace. Thank you.